In Spain, the famous Ibn Hazm wrote this famous book called al Red ala Ibn Nadira al Yahudi, refutation of Ibn Nadira the Jew. I read part of this book as a graduate student. And he says right there in the book, and by the way, Ibn Hazm is, uh, uh, how can I put this? Uh, uh, he's a fellow with attitude. <laughs> put it that way. Even in his classical Arabic, his attitude comes through. And he's raving and ranting and saying, you know, you know, you know, you better think, you better fall down on your knees and thank God for Islamic law, because that's the only thing standing between my sword and your neck. That's what he said. Ibn Hazm says this. Does everybody get the point, point that I'm trying to make? In other words, if it were up to me based on pure prejudice, I would what? But as a Muslim, I can't. According to Islamic law, you are a protected minority here. Okay? Alright? So, there's uh, Professor Lewis. Alright? Uh, be careful of that Princeton crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. There's some, some good buddies over there. But, uh, anyway, but th th this, does, this does leave us with a question, though. In fact, uh, the, 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 the article that you read, uh, uh, Jihad in the Modern World, I have a confession to make. I was uh, first sort of inspired to, to, to write that article, uh, uh, which was written very quickly, I have to admit. Um, not so long after 9-11, I was uh, riding in my car in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I was listening to NPR. And of course they were talking about, you know, 9-11, the whole 9 yards. And uh, this woman called in to, 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 to NPR. And she asked a very poignant, pungent question. She said, well, I'm hearing all of these justifications for jihad. And all of these apologies for jihad. I want to know. Why does it exist? Period. Does that make sense? Why have it? Period. Why does a religion need an institutional, uh, an institution of organized violence? Why do they have it? Period. All right. And that was sort of the context, the major context, the main impetus uh, that sort of from the writing of, of this article. And what, uh, what we find is that, again, history tells far more of the story than uh, appears to the eye. The fact of the matter is, is that in Arabia, in the seventh century, okay, we are dealing with what scholars have termed a perpetual state of war. A state of war. Not an actual necessarily act of war. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? Not people actually at war with each other. But remember, for example, when we drew the map of Medina up here with our little circles, remember what we said, all right? Medina was in a state of war. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? In as much as everybody was what? Free gay. Okay? Alright? In other words, war was the norm. Peace was the exception. Remember, I mean, no United Nations, Amnesty International, none of this. Alright? You were as secure as you were strong. Okay? Alright? And if another tribe was big enough to take you over, they would take you over. And this would be, you know, uh, Orlando Patterson up, uh, up at Harvard uh, talked about the medieval understanding of sovereign freedom. And sovereign freedom was simply this. 
If I was powerful, okay, people recognize my right to take, to subdue. That was sovereign or freedom. Okay? And this was a part of the medieval order. Okay? Alright? And people fought as a matter of survival. Okay? It would have been not only improbable, but grotesque for the prophet to try to put a movement on the field that did not come to terms with this overall state of war. Okay? And we see this in several uh, verses in the Quran. For example, we saw yesterday, remember the, uh, the forbidden months. Why do you need to have forbidden months? Because otherwise, not even Ramallah. This was around the Hajj. Other than that, okay, okay, it's a free for all. Okay, it's a free for all. The point being that Islam, the Quran, did not introduce violence, no organized violence. Okay, all right. The prophetic mission was born in that very context. Okay, and in that context, fighting was a means of survival, period. You either fought or you were subdued, period. 